right, so here we go. I'm not sure how much of the pressing I'm going to be able to show you, but uh, as far as pulling the, the uh, bearing and the knuckle off together, uh, to take it somewhere to get pressed, I'll definitely be able to show you that. And uh, this one's very obvious. If you couldn't hear the noise in the first place, look how bad this one is. This, this one, this guy let it go forever. So uh, there might be other damage behind here also. And the backing plate and the shoes and all that gets damaged once it gets this far above the weight of the vehicle on it. So we'll see what happens with this one. Pull our wheel off. We're going to pull the nut off on here for the axle, and it's a 34 millimeter. It's pretty easy. And then we're going to pull the actual brake caliper off of here. It's a 10 millimeter bolt, top and bottom on here. And then uh, we'll swing it up and out of the way and hook it onto the, the um, spring right here so we can get to the rest of this. Next we're going to pull the caliper off right here and there's two 10 millimeter bolts. Take those out. And then all you got to do is lift it up and off of there. And you may have to compress it a little bit with the actual uh, C-clamp or wood clamp like you would a regular caliper just to get in enough so we can get past the rust ridge on the actual rotor. And then we're going to put it up and to the side just like so, and that will hold it for us. All right, next thing we're gonna have to do is pull the uh, rotor off here, obviously. Now, usually they're stuck on here. You can see this one's quite rusted, and uh, they create a rust ridge on the inside for the inside shoes on there. So we're gonna have to tap it off of here and break the bond with the actual hub face, and then we're gonna have to probably pry it off uh, side to side to get past that rust ridge on here. This one, sometimes going like this and shimming it off will help also. This can be the worst part of the job is actually getting this off of here, uh, but this one's pretty easy. Alright, so what I think happened on this one is that the actual bearing was so loose in here that it actually was going like this. And it basically cleaned the inside hat area up here where that rust ridge formed. So this, this one's came off real nice and easy. Uh, but if you are having a problem getting this rotor off of here, since there is no access from the back side to adjust it with the star adjuster, and the star adjuster is usually frozen beyond belief and won't turn anyways, uh, what you can do is keep pounding on a little bit with the uh, hammer and that'll move it along against the shoes inside of here and it will actually clean it off. And then use pry bars, something like this, and you kind of work it off, pressing off of the backing plate evenly, side to side, side to side, and that'll do the same thing where it cleans it off. I'll try to show you on here. You can see mine, that rust ridge right here, it's basically gone, and it's even with the rest of the rust in here. So it's able to slide right out. And now we're gonna start unbolting the actual knuckle itself from the upper arm right here is an 18 millimeter nut. And then over here for the toe link right here, there's another 18 millimeter down below here. Start taking them out. And then we're gonna tap them up and through so we can start working on the pinch mechanism in here. finish putting it through with either a punch or an air hammer like this. Get the bolt fully through. Alright, now because it is so hard to get in here with a cold chisel and actually get a good angle to spread this, and it's, it's just a real pain. It's almost impossible. What I do is I come over here, I follow the link along where it bolts the rear cross member here, 
let's see, right there, and there's an 18 millimeter nut on it, I take that off, and I take the whole toe link and the knuckle itself off together, and it makes it a lot easier. And it'll look something like this, don't worry, you're not going to actually change the adjustment on here, the adjustment's right here with the lock nut right here and uh, the threads. So we're not going to be changing any of that. Don't worry about that. We're just taking a nut off of there. And it has a little flag on it right here that's actually going to go around. And it's going to get stuck against the frame and it'll hold it from spinning so we can get that nut off of there. There we go. Step to come off. Alright, at this point we need to pull the, the parking brake actuator right here out and we're just going to spread the shoes to the side and push it out and that'll just flop to the side then. And it's something like this, you pry off of the actual bearing, uh, hub and bearing, pry it out a little bit, we can actually start pushing it through. The same thing on this side. It may get stuck in there because the boot on here is rubber and it'll just bind like that. We'll get that out of there. That last one's just hanging on. On the advanced track models, they have an actual sensor back here for the ABS and a tone ring set up instead of the center diff style. So we're going to take this out of here and flop it to the side so it doesn't get damaged. Down below here, there's an 8mm bolt, and then up top here is just a locating tab, and you just kind of pry it off of there gently. It's going to be rusted in there and uh, wiggle it out like that. Next thing you want to do at the bottom of the knuckle here, there's a bolt that holds it to the lower arm and this side's an 18 millimeter in the head and then the nut of it is 13 16 so we're gonna take that off get that bolt out of there swing that knuckle up so we can get access to the top arm make sure you get this keep this uh, bolt and nut together since they are different sizes. And now we should be able to swing this whole thing up and out of the way and get better access over here. All right, once your toe link is out of there, this thing will flop pretty good back and forth. But we need to get it full, fully turned so we can get access to that pinch back there and uh, spread it so we can get that arm out, upper arm without damaging it. We're gonna break it free from the lower arm. And now you can see once the half shaft is out, we can spin this anywhere we want to get access to that pinch and spread it and get that arm out without damaging anything. Something like this where it's fully supported by the spring and everything behind it, we could shove the uh, actual cold chisel in here like this and that'll spread these ears on here and allow us to pop the upper arm out a lot easier. Something like this. Don't spread it too much, but we just want to get spread it enough to get this out without damage. After that, we should be able to just tap up on this. And you can see it's starting to come out already. Just persistence and patience is, uh, is key here without damaging anything. By spreading it like that, it came out quite easy for how rusted it is. 
Now once you get everything off of here, of course you're gonna to wanna to clean up all the rust off of here and all that kind of stuff, put some grease on it and uh, make it easier going back in. Clean it up a little bit. And I found that doing it this way will not damage the joint and will not damage the boot uh, on both of them, the toe link and the upper arm like this. Now what I used on this one was an actual chisel and air hammer because it's a thinner uh, profile to get in there, whereas this one's a little wider. I used a cold chisel. Uh, it just depends what you have on hand. And then you simply start tapping it out of there. Same thing as the upper arm. And that way it comes right out without damaging anything. All right, the last thing you got to do before you go to the press and start pressing out pieces of this bearing is get this snap ring out. It's a big, heavy-duty snap ring that goes in the back side here, and it's buried in here. I just had to clean mine out so I could even see it. And uh, you're going to want to start tapping it out of there. Like so. Um, we're going to use snap ring pliers, of course, but in order to break the bond of the rust, we're going to want to start tapping it. And get the, uh, the bond broken on here. There goes that side. We'll try to get this side going now. And it's got a little eyelets, if you can't see on there, that I'm actually tapping into. The little eyelets right there, see them? And that'll get it broken free, spinning around in there, and then we just need to get those heavy duty snap ring players in there. Get the big boy out for this one. There it goes. There we go, the whole thing is moving now. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing now. Here's the two eyelets. They're kind of uh, scrunched in already from all the rust. So we're going to clean them out. And then we're going to get this snap ring the heck out of here. Now if your snap ring's broken or something like that, you can also do what I did here and then start getting a, a flat blade screwdriver, something like this. In there, you kind of pry it out of there. Just be very careful, though. Anytime you're touching these snap rings, eye protection is a good idea. They're very strong. So that means they got a lot of pent-up energy, and they can go flying. I see this one's stuck still. I may end up prying it out of there. It's moving again. And this is why I say, uh, you know, really soak them with rust penetrant and let them sit for a little while. Yeah, this one will move. Here I'll show you the wrong way to do it if you don't have snap ring pliers. Get behind it. Right up. And you can either keep going like this, or you can start taking another screwdriver and working it around and start popping it out of there. I'll put eye protection on it. Something like this. And you just keep working it out of there. And eventually you'll start working it up and out of there. It'll just be stuck a little bit here and there. Like right here it's stuck. Just keep, keep on working it out of there. Wow. 
Now it doesn't matter how deformed this one gets or how bad it is because either way you should be changing it out of here because they get so uh, uh, rusted over the years and all that. At this point, clean up the bearing surface once again so you can see the outside of the bearing where it touches the housing of the knuckle. And then we're going to spray it again and let it soak for a little bit so it can wick down in there and start breaking any kind of bond. And then we can go start pressing the hub out. All right, the way we gotta actually press these out of here is to take a rotor and we actually cut the middle section out of it and just leave the ridge right here. That way it can support it all the way around. And it still isn't a perfect support, but it's the best we can do um, to support this and press out the hub first. That's this small section in the middle here. And we're gonna press that out and it already popped, I mean, really bad. This one's really bad in there. And uh, that is the absolute first step is getting that hub out of there. We're going to finish pressing it out of there. Came out nice and free. Now this is typical right here of the hub to come out with the inner race of the bearing there. So all we need to do is actually press this off next so we have a free hub to press back into the new bearing and get this old stuff off of here. And here's that rotor hat I was talking about, how the middle section of the rotor got cut out with a torch, and it has a rim around it, and it'll support the knuckle all the way around while you're pressing things in and out and all that stuff. So it, it, between this and this, which is used to get that um, inner race off the bearing here, there's just a lot of special tools required, especially for the explorers in the back. Um, to get these out of here and they, they're in there tight and that's why I don't recommend doing this yourself. Alright, and once you got your bearing splitter underneath the actual bearing race here you just start pressing off of there. This one's actually half off of there already and uh, this should come off of there pretty easy. And we'll see it coming off of here. And then, your bearing hub is actually free and clear. You just need to clean up a little bit, put a little bit of grease on here, and shine her up, and she's good to reuse. Alright, as far as pressing the bearing itself out, what's left in there right now is the housing of the bearing. The outside outer edge, which is very thin, and you cannot get to this edge to push it out because there's just an edge to it. At this point, what's left in there is the housing of the bearing itself and the other side of the bearing, an inner race. Um, we can't just press off of that inner race to get it out because that'll just pop right out of there. And then all you got is a shell in there. And there's a lip right here. So we can't press off this lip either because that's covered by the actual knuckle. So what we need to do is find something that fits in this inner ridge right here. Hopefully you can see it there. There's an inner ridge and we're going to press off of that. And we'll see how this goes. Usually these explode uh, because there's so much pressure behind them by the time they get out of there. This one, I already started striking it. I put this in here and I use this three pound sledge and I strike it, strike it, strike it, try to shock it so it separates from the actual knuckle housing here and then you just press it out like normal.
This one seems to be coming out just fine because I did do that shocking process. Helps tremendously. Very lucky. Almost there. It's getting very easy now. Falls right out. Alright, this is how the housing looks on the inside there. And you can see a lip I was talking about down in there. And that's why we can't get to it uh, to strike it out of there from the back side there. So, um, get it all cleaned up in there, greased up. And there's a channel in here for that snap ring. Make sure you clean that out really good so you put our new snap ring in there with ease. And it fully seats in there. And now we're ready to uh, press the new bearing in. Just put it on a nice hard surface so that it actually supports right here when you're pressing it in, not on the shoes or anything like that. And the bearing itself just goes in there either way. There's no tone ring inside of it or anything like that. That's weird. Uh, there's not directional. Just put it in there. Square it up. Kind of push in by hand just a little bit so it's straight in there. And then we can start pressing it. Again, another special tool I have that fits perfectly around the outer race on here. So we're pressing it in on the outer race and not the inner race uh, to make sure that it does not get damaged going in. Alright, and at this point you just press it until it bottoms out on that outside flange. And just look at it every once in a while and make sure it's pressing it straight. They kind of self-center in there. Again, all this is for demonstration only. I do not recommend doing this yourself. And you can see if it's self-centered, we're level. It's going right in. And you'll start to feel it getting tight. That's a good thing. Towards the end it gets tight and then of course it comes to a dead stop. Popping is all normal. Turn you a little bit so you can see that. There you go. It just bottomed out. I give, it, I give it a couple extra good pumps after that. Make sure it's fully seated in there. Uh, it's not going to hurt anything because it's fully supported underneath here, right in that center. So you're not going to pop anything out or break anything. And we're good. Get your stuff out of here. And we can start putting that snap ring in here. And I want you got it fully pressed in there. You think you do. Make sure you look and make sure you can see that that uh, that channel on there evenly all, all the way around. And also look at this side and make sure it's right against the housing here too. And your center inner bearing is not pushed out and all that. And then we can go on to putting the snap ring in. The snap ring does go in a certain way. It can go any orientation in here that you want, but there is a chamfer on there. You can see this side does not have it, and this side does. You can see it right there, that beveled edge. That needs to go up, not like this. You can see it there. And this snap ring is very, very strong, so be patient. Wear safety glasses, and uh, be careful. As you get started on the bench, bring it over, lay it in there, and then let go. After that, take a flat blade screwdriver and a hammer and tap the ears. Um, let's see if you can see them this way. There we go. These two ears right here, tap them outwards so they fully seat. And that's how it looks when it's fully seated in there. We just tap them out, tap it out, 
and it'll fully seat all the way around then. At this point, flip it over. If you're going to do any kind of shoe work, brake work in here, do it now before you press that center hub on here because it's a lot easier. It's, everything's all open. It's right here on the bench and you can do it all now. Now going back in on the back side here, you want to support the actual center race on here with a piece of metal that's strong, something like this, between the actual snap ring. And then build it up and we'll put all the pressure when pressing on here instead of the housing because then the actual center race will pop out when we're pushing that hub through here. So you gotta support that center. So we're gonna put the whole thing on here. Flip it over and start pressing. I'm not show you how we're pressing the hub back in. Greased up, cleaned up, supported on the bottom. And then up here, we're gonna put a press tool in the center of the hub and try to make it as lined up as possible. And this should press in quite easy. And this should self-center too. If it starts to bind up, you need to stop and center it because it'll actually blow out the inner bearings on there, inner races and mess up your bearing. And this will uh, stop all by itself. It'll bottom out. Now due to time constraints and that rear wheel bearing job, um, I was not able to show you how to put it back together. Um, but it's just basically installation, it's just reversal of removal. I'll put all the torque specs down below in the description. When you're done pressing or you have a shop press, it, whatever you do to get that new bearing in there, um, make sure you turn it by hand. While it's off, you get the knuckle in your hand, you get the bearing, turn that hub while it's all pressed in there and it should be smooth going all the way around. Not not a um, not rough feeling, not loose, nothing like that. It should be nice, have a resistance to it, but it should go around and around, spin it around and around, and you'll know that it was pressed in there properly because these are they're very easy to press in improperly on there, and it's very easy to destroy the knuckle if you don't know what you're doing, um, pressing it out and pressing it in. So it, it, these are very tough to get out. Usually. Um, we're using the full force of that press and that thing usually just lets go and it goes BOOM! It just freaking, everything just flies and it, it falls to the floor and it's a really loud uh, uh, deal. And actually on this one, uh, before I started filming that, 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 uh, that center hub, that was so bad on this one, that one went BOOM! So I was like, wow, you know, that thing would not move, and all of a sudden it just let loose. So I did not catch that on camera, but you still get the point as far as pressing the hub out, pressing the bearing out, pulling the snap ring, and then reversal of that. So uh, this has been a video that you guys have been asking for for a long time. I'm telling you, if you can, if you can afford it, if you can have a, if you know of a shop that will do it for you, like a Ford dealer, it has that hat with the, the rotor hat with the cutout, so it sits in there, supports the, the knuckle, the press this bearing in and out. I would have them do it because this is a real dangerous pain in the butt job. Uh, this one actually did brakes on afterwards, and I had to freaking cut the other rotor apart. I got a picture of it on Facebook there because the thing was... It's just so rusted. Everything's just so rusted back there. So if you live in the Midwest or anywhere in the Salt Belt, you're likely going to run into the same, same problems. And it's a real pain. It can get really dangerous. So um, if anything, use this video to pull that knuckle off. Say, here you go, buddy, at the shop. And to have them press that new bearing in for you. And then you get it back and it's all done for you. It's the best bet. Um, I wish I could sublet these things out there. They're just that big of a pain compared to anything else out there I've ever done on a Ford.